So hey, welcome everyone. We're here on World Read Aloud Day, and my name is Mike Dolphson. I work on the Microsoft Education team, and I'm with the founder of World Read Aloud Day, Pam Allen. So Pam, thanks for joining today. Tell us a little about yourself. Hey, Mike, thank you so much for having me on this amazing day, um, World Read Aloud Day, which we founded at Lit World, the organization that I created in 2007 to bring powerful literacy opportunities to children worldwide. And since then, I've written a lot of books about the subject of reading and writing and uh, communication skills as children develop them. But I would say that, you know, for me, World Read Aloud Day is my most favorite, most wonderful thing that, that I've created because it, it took a life of its own on and it spread to many countries around the world. Um, it's a really inclusive uh, experience for people and people should celebrate in their own languages, from their own cultures, um, in their own ways. And uh, yeah, so my um, my most recent next book coming out is with my colleague, Dr. Ernest Morell, uh, Every Child is Super Reader, second edition coming out this month. So lots of good right. stuff. Well, yeah, then on that track, so just Tell everyone why is reading fluency so important, whether it's for students, teachers, parents, why should we be paying attention to this? Yeah, fluency, you know, it's kind of, there's a lot of t talk about reading and all the different components of reading. And reading is both at the same time seems very natural and the other way sometimes seems very hard for all of us, not just for children. <laughs> Fluency is such an important ingredient. The way we describe fluency is a combination of speed, accuracy, and expression. But at the bottom of that is really that you're fluent because you understand something. So we can't forget that fluency is also about comprehension. It's about understanding. It's about decoding. It's about, it's really like the heartbeat of reading. And so when we think about fluency, really when a child is having trouble with fluency, they're getting stuck. And so then we have to be like reading detectives and find out what is getting them stuck. But fluency mm -hmm. really, because it is that heartbeat, it's really telling us a lot of information. Speed is information, you know, accuracy is information and expression is information. When a child is able to, you know, intonate really beautifully about what they're reading or they're able to move quickly through a passage or they're able to accurately identify new vocabulary words, you've just gotten a huge amount of information. But we often relegate fluency to something that feels like, well, we'll get to that or we'll talk about that. But to teach that explicitly, that's really huge and really important to thinking about when children are learning to decode and use their phonemic skills and their phonic skills, when they're using their strategies for comprehension. In the middle of all that is really how am I helping my child become fluent? Uh, that's, a, that's a really great explanation. I love that. Now, on that same point, so what can people do at school? What can people do at home to encourage reading fluency? Well, you know, first of all, I think something that I am excited about that you guys are doing so brilliantly is you created an app called Reading Progress that is really centers fluency. It gives children a chance, young adults, even adults, a chance to practice their fluency and have teachers and all the important people in their life to understand exactly what's getting in their way, um, whether it's difficulty in vocabulary or speed itself, smoothness in reading, so many aspects of that. I think that's so one thing I'm thrilled by is that you guys are working on that. I think that, and it's amazing. So I, I'm extremely excited about that. I think the other thing is what's happening on World Read Aloud Day, um, which is where all this con confluence is, and that is we need for children to feel the power of reading aloud. They need to see us doing it, they need to see other mentors in their life doing it. So World Read Aloud Day and all the days to come is a great time to both pull out that reading progress experience, first of all. Secondly, also bring people into your classroom or into your home who can read aloud in front of children so they can actually see what that feels like to be in front of with besides an experienced fluent reader. What does that actually feel like? You know, it's kind of like when you know, if you love sports and you watch football on TV, that child or young adult doing that, it's fun, definitely fun, but it's also, you're actually watching a hero. You know, you're, you're saying, wait a minute, that, that person runs pretty quickly down the field. Like, how did he do that? Or you're watching like a great tennis player and you, you know, say that person smashed that serve, you know, how did she do that? I think those are, that's 
observing fluency in action is really using authentic literature, using the literature kids love, young adults, teenagers love, to actually have them invite them into this read aloud world. Yeah, that's that's great. And I think the fact that you've been able to see so much evolve since you started World Read Aloud Day, and you've got a really great perspective of how things have been changing. And so you mentioned reading progress. One of the ways things are changing, especially during the pandemic, where it can be even hard for people to get together and read aloud, whether it's in school or fluency at home. Uh, maybe it's only fluency at home versus school. But the way you and I met, for people who might not be familiar, we have a friend in common who works at Microsoft, and, and this person is a former educator who knows Pam, and this person reached out to me early on in the development of this tool reading progress and said, wow, you need to talk to Pam Allen. She would love this. She'd have some great feedback. So my team has been building a tool called Reading Progress that Pam mentioned. And what that does is it allows teachers to very easily assign students, either for practice or an assignment, either way, or for a World Read Aloud Day, for example, a reading fluency passage where they get the text in a team's assignment, they open it up, and they can record themselves reading. We can use video, we record audio, and so then a student doesn't have to read out loud in front of a teacher necessarily who's sitting right next to them. They can do it at home, they can do it in a hallway, they can do it wherever they want independently. And then that student can submit that reading assignment in the recorded audio and video back to the educator and there's all sorts of ways that we can gauge reading speed and accuracy. The teacher can watch the video for expression. And we use some auto detect and speech recognition to really speed it up for a teacher. And so what we're hearing is, is that educators are able to let students practice reading fluency all the time. It used to be that a teacher might not have time to do all those different parts of gathering the passage, have the student read and listening each student at a time. And this teacher now gets so much time that we're hearing the teachers are giving reading fluency passages all the time. And, and I'm, this is the part that I know Pam likes the best, um, we're hearing that students love doing it this way and they're asking for more reading passages. They're actually asking teachers to get more fluency passages. And I've had teachers say, in 25 years of doing reading fluency, it's very rare that I've ever had a student ask me to have more reading passages all the time. So I know Pam has been working with us given us some great feedback on the design of the tool, the development of the tool. And so it's been a great partnership working with Pam as we've been developing reading progress. No, yeah, I agree with everything that you've said, Mike. I've loved this partnership as well. And I just believe in this so much. Everybody has been so thoughtful in thinking not just about the technology of this tool and how we make it easy for teachers, or any adults in the life of that person to really support them in advancing fluency, but also what you said, which is the, the serious joy, the joy of the work that when we don't see that high level of motivation and engagement, then we know we have a problem. We can't make people do things they don't wanna do if, if, you know, if it feels hard, feels uncomfortable, but somehow what you have done is you've created, you've encircled this experience, which is a very serious work Children are learning to read, young adults are learning to read, um, even we see adults are learning to read through using this tool. And I think a lot of that is because you went into it with joy. I think that on World Read Aloud Day, we take this very seriously, this work of reading aloud. Um, we're not saying that joy and skills have to be separate. We're saying that together, by having a high motivation, high interest, high, high engagement experience with the read aloud, our young people are gonna to wanna to do that more and more. And the more you do something, the better you get because some of it is about that relentless practice. The other piece though too is, I think the fascination to make reading more visible. And I think that's fascinating to people because mm -hmm. a lot of other things in, in life are more visible to learn, whether you know back to sports, but you can actually see them. Whereas reading is very invisible to people learning to read, whether you're a child, a teen or an adult and you say, hey, I, I can, I, I'm imagining that this must feel easier for people, but I, I don't really know how. What you're doing is amplifying, illuminating the fluency work. And I think that it's not just about the fact that it is fun to actually practice your read aloud and know your teacher's gonna watch it. And it's kind of a cool communication uh, methodology, but also that actually it's, it's pretty awesome to be able to realize you're advancing your fluency skills. You start to feel like things are easier, things feel more smooth, 
you know when you get in trouble with something or you get blocked that someone's there to help you. And I think World Read Aloud Day is here to say that story that learning is meant to be joyous and when it feels hard that we have a high level of resilience and strategies to solve those problems. Well, Ken, actually, to World Read Aloud Day, can you tell us a little bit about the background of World Read Aloud Day and how it got started? Well, World Read Aloud Day, the, and the origin story of it is one of my favorite stories because it is all about, it's so child-centered, which is really the work I believe the most in. Is the child going to care about this? Is the young adult going to care? That's really my mission is that because I know I trust them when they love something you can be sure that they'll practice it and then we're going to help them get a lot better at it. Um, for World Read Aloud Day, the, the origin was I was in a classroom, I was reading aloud from a, one of my favorite picture books and one of the and the children were highly engaged and at the end one of the children said to me, I love this feeling that we had. Why can't we do more of this, you know? And um, I said, you know, I wonder that sometimes, like how can we make it more important to teachers? How can we make teachers know, or not even teachers, because they do know, but really the bigger system of how we practice and study for tests and all the kinds of things that we want our children to advance their reading skills. How can we, I said right to him, he was seven years old, I just said, how can we make it so that people will know that the read aloud is an actual instructional tool, like what I did with you here, even though you weren't actually reading at that moment, is really a powerful way to help you become a better reader. So he said, well, you know what? When it's my birthday, everyone pays a lot of attention to me. Maybe we should have a big party for the read aloud. And everyone in the class laughed. Uh, people thought that was you know, awesome. wonderful. And I went home and I really thought about it. And I gathered my <laughs> Lit World team together and I said, you know, this little guy today had a really good idea. And luckily for me, we've always had an amazing team at Lit World and people who are really, really, really onto social media and really understand the power of technology to spread a good idea. And they said, let's just tell everyone about it. Let's make a date. Let's call it World Read Aloud Day. Let's make a party, just like that seven-year-old <laughs> I said. And he, he was right. You know, it. we've seen... The research does show that reading aloud, being read to, and actually reading aloud yourself have a huge impact on, on your development as a reader and just oh, connecting to others, right? So World Read Aloud Day has given us an opportunity to actually center that work and, and show people whether they you know want to look at it from the instructional point of view or even thinking about bonding at home with your child if you're listening today, watching as a parent, grandparent, caregiver, Bonding is important too. And that that's another thing that building fluency and reading together really do is to say, I'm gonna bring you closer to your teacher, to your peers, to your parents, to your grandparents. And there's nothing better than literature and text um, and a great story to do that. Oh, I love that. I hadn't heard the actual origin story. I love that came from a, a passionate student. Couldn't be better. So from your background, whether it's with World Read Aloud and also working with my team on the development of this tool and, and also i should mention uh the tool is free so it's actually this is free it's available to anyone on the planet in tons of languages you know works on pc mac web chromebooks ipads android doesn't even matter it's all free but from what you've seen why do you think this belongs in classrooms who are thinking about reading fluency you know what I I had when I when you started telling me about this I felt a sense of so much excitement because I have never seen anything like this. I think this is a new fresh way an entry into a very a lot of confusing things that people are trying to figure out. It clears the path for much more clarity on really what when my when my student or my own child is working on reading what is working for them and what is getting in their way. I said earlier that, you know, fluency is like the heartbeat of reading. And I think that you, 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 you created something that really makes it easy for teachers to understand, to use that tool, to do that work, to say, I'm gonna really observe what my student is doing. I'm going to be able to follow that observation with actual practical applications. So that's another thing that this tool does brilliantly is to give us a lot of scaffolding and support for what comes next. And that idea that fluency isn't just hanging out there on its own, but it's really connected to comprehension, to vocabulary development, 
um, and, and building speed and expression, which is a little bit of what we talked about earlier when defining the idea of fluency itself. The other thing too is I feel um, an incredible amount of, of gratitude to the team for thinking right from the very beginning about that multilingual uh, population, the mm -hmm. communities around the world, but right here in the United States, the so much diversity of language, there's that's so rich and that should be an asset for everybody and thinking about building their language fluency, building linguistic fluency in your home language, in your school language, in your community language. And the thing that's so amazing about reading progress is it invites us all in. It is meant for that multilingual world. And that to me, that is, wow, you know, that that's huge. And, and also, um, you know, finally I'll say about reading progress is that it's easy to use, which I think is for me as somebody who, you know, I'm a teacher advocate, I'm a parent advocate, and I do not like when people feel more confused than ever before, when they're trying to help their kids learn to do one of the most fundamental things that's gonna give that child lifelong freedom and opportunity and academic achievement. So let's make things easy for them. And I feel that is what you have done. It's amazing. Now we're definitely excited about what we're seeing. And actually, so what we're gonna close up today's talk with is a little listicle of some of the top results that it's not just me. I've been sharing these with Pam. Uh, we, we've both been seeing these results and what's happening with reading progress. So we're going to give our top five things that we're seeing with results with reading fluency. So Pam, I'll let you start. Okay, well, I have one um, and that is we're seeing we're seeing authentic fluency practice. That's something that's very hard to accomplish. It's very hard for a textbook to do that. Um, it's very hard to get authentic, to connect children, to young adults, to what they want to read um, what what the community is reading. This authentic practice is actually increasing children's skills, um, increasing their exposure to that work around accuracy, speed, and expression. So one is it is authentic fluency practice. That's why they love doing it because it feels so natural. Yeah, well, and actually, I'm going to say related to that, the second thing that we're seeing, and I mentioned this earlier, but it's the positive feedback loop and kids asking for more passages. And what's really interesting is when we were designing the tool, we had hoped for that, but it wasn't a, a guarantee that students are going to actually enjoy it that much. We, we tested it, but and the testing phase is a little different. But we've just been hearing not only from U.S. educators, from educators around the world, that students are continuously asking for more passages. They're saying, oh, I can see the data. I want to improve my data. I want to improve my score. It, we didn't design it to be gamified, but some students are treating it like, I want to improve. I can see the data because they've never seen it, like you mentioned before. And so that is number two, which is this positive feedback loop of actually wanting and getting more reading fluency passages. And the third one is one that, again, we had thought in the beginning this would definitely be something that was going to be helpful. But, but the stories we're hearing, which is the non-stigmatization effect, there are some sets of students who really don't like reading in front of anyone because they feel stigmatized, maybe they're shy. There could be lots of reasons. And we've heard stories. There was a story of a middle schooler in Canada and she came to her teacher early in the year and said, I hate reading. I hate, hate, hate reading. I don't want to read. Made it really clear she didn't like reading to her teacher. And her teacher gave her a reading progress assignment and said, well, why don't you try reading out loud, but do it at home. Like, here's your assignment, record yourself at home and then just submit it to me and we'll see. And the teacher got the submission and she looked at it and she said, this student reads just fine. And she gave, she showed it to the student and said, look, you're reading just fine. Like you don't have any problems with reading. And the student was stunned is what the teacher said. And the student started reflecting and ultimately realized it's because I dislike reading in front of teachers and people in general, I would get so stressed, I'd get down on myself and it would impact her ability to read out loud. And once she was able to realize I can read just fine, now guess what? She's asking for reading passages for this teacher all the time. And the teacher is stunned because she said at the beginning of the year, this student swore that she hated reading and now she loves it. So like those types of stories are what our team loves hearing the most. And I know Pam, you do too. I um, love so I'll it. let you take number four. Yeah, number four. Well, I and I just love what you said. I I love that so much. You know, when people go to the doctor, they 
Um, you know, we, we sometimes refer to that anxiety as white coat syndrome. I think there's definitely that similar mm -hmm. kind of way of being in the world as a reader. There's a lot of anxiety. And, um, oh, you know, I've often said that anxiety and shame are the worst drivers for reading success. So we've got to remove those obstacles. That's work we can do by building that environment. And reading progress does that. So number four um, is that we, this is a multilingual, um, inclusive, celebratory tool where languages are valued. Um, multi, the multicultural world in which we live, the multilingual world in which we live is an asset. It's a benefit to all of us. Um, also, young people learning to read, um, read really well in their own languages and then, you know, scaffold on English. These are all really wonderful things that children can do. Um, building fluency in more than one language is really powerful and good for the brain. Um, and in fact, there are studies that show even might affect your like less likelihood of getting Alzheimer's later in life if you grow up oh. in reading and writing and speaking and listening uh, in a multilingual setting. Um, but it, for reading progress for EL teachers, this is an amazing tool. Learning English using this tool is spectacular for our teachers and for our students and for practice at home because it is a safe, as you said, a safe way um, to practice reading aloud, which is important. We're building fluency, speed, accuracy, expression. As we're doing that work as an EL student, we are sensitive to what are the quote mistakes I make that might be very logical um, for moving from my home language to English. And in reading progress, this is a time of celebration, of forward steps, of saying well, this is not a negative shaming effect, but this is a positive forward movement um, in, in myself as an EL learner. So both for multilingual learners, for our EL students, what a great tool. Yeah, agree. And the fifth one is one that, again, we did design the tool for, but we're just hearing these stories from educators, which is teachers save enormous amounts of time. Teachers can save so much time because not only can it help them analyze how the student was doing afterwards, we also automatically generate insights and charts on reading speed, accuracy, the most challenging words. So what we're hearing from teachers is it's so easy to literally push a button and give out a reading fluency assignment and gather all those instead of a teacher going through one at a time, taking five minutes, teachers save enormous amounts of time so they're able to do reading fluency more again that positive feedback loop and on that and, and pam i got a new story for you this is so new i have not even shared it with you yet uh, just the other two days ago uh, i met with an adult literacy program and this they're piloting reading progress over the last few months because reading fluency uh, you know of course is great for younger learners but there's a whole spectrum of adult learners and this this adult literacy program has students from the age of 16 to 70, like age 70. And the educator told me this. She said, it used to be that I would do the actual read aloud fluency check once per semester because that's the only, I couldn't have time to do it more than that. She said with reading progress, she is now doing reading, reading fluency practice almost every day. <laughs> once a semester read aloud, to almost every day. And she said, now our students have done it so much, they're like, yeah, this is great. I don't mind it. I'm sure, I'd love to practice. So, you know, the story of, of saving teachers time doesn't just apply to a fourth grade teacher or a third grade teacher. It works with adult literacy too. Wow, I mean, that I love that story because again, it's the, what you're saying, it's all ages, yes, but it's also that reading progress is giving people a really practical way to do a really powerful thing. And that is at any age. That means that's a that that's such a signal that that's a very inclusive, very affirming, very thoughtfully done experience. Because that uh, that's even there's even more shame and more resistance. The older you get, the harder reading feels. And the whole idea of fluency, you know, is when I I sometimes liken it to skating. Because when you first get up on skates, it can feel really awful and you you're just like how could and if you look down at the skate and you see it's just a blade like how could anybody carry their weight on there but it's then when you start doing it and then you do it again and again and you're like wait a minute i'm like you know <laughs> i'm good you know i can smoothly go that's really what that feels like to read fluently and i think your that story is so amazing because 
I'm thinking of that adult, anybody of any age saying you too can put on those skates and smooth you're out there. Yeah. Yeah. I love that metaphor. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap up and we have some things. So if you want to learn more about reading progress, and I'm also, you can look at the link on the screen for these that you'll see, but if you want to learn more about reading progress, go to aka.ms forward slash reading progress. And for World Read Aloud Day, to learn more about how we're partnering with PAM and Lit World, this is Microsoft, as well as Flipgrid, we have a blog that we've put out, and that is at aka.mswrad2022. And again, the links are on the screen. And then also on Twitter, we're going to have a fun badge that if you use Reading Progress on World Read Aloud Day with your students, we have a fun badge that you can tweet out. And Pam, I'm going to let you close this out today with your amazing alliteration and how people can remember World Read Aloud Day and Reading Progress. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. And thank you guys, everybody, for this incredible, incredible step forward in fluency. Today is World Read Aloud Day. So my acronym today is TAG, TELL, and TRY. So tag us, tag Microsoft, tag Reading Progress, tag Lit World, and tell a story tell each other, tell everybody about reading progress today, tell everybody about World Read Aloud Day, sometimes commonly known as RAD, and try something today. Try with your students, try reading progress, try telling those stories aloud, try having them take the lead and sharing how did that feel for them, and then and then go back and tag, um, tag us again and, and find your badge because tag, tell and try today is the is the way to go. Let's be together in this journey. Let's bring the world together in reading fluency. I think we can make huge strides getting all kids reading and um, using tools like this. Reading progress is a game changer. So today is World Read Aloud Day, but every day is a day to build fluency. So today, let's be together in that.